Hello everyone, welcome to the Rugby League Lunch Hour here on loverugbyleague.com. I'm James Gordon. We are, Drew Darbyshire is going to join me in a minute. He's just finishing his lunch. His body's a temple. He's got to eat at certain times. Um, we're going to go through the uh, the Wembley week, build up, go through a few of the stories coming out of um, this Rugby League this week. Of course, it's the Challenge Cup final. St. Helens against Warrington on Saturday, uh, followed by the 1895 Cup Final, the first 1895 Cup Final between Widnes and Sheffield. <coughs> Please do leave your comments, um, as you do every week, if you want us to talk about something or if you want to add your two penneth into any of the conversations that me and Drew have on the show. We're sponsored by Betford. Thanks to Betford for their support, and please do continue to support them as sponsors of Rugby League. Um, recent Betford have just signed up as well as sponsors of the Women's Super League. Just running through some of the news this week. So breaking this morning, I think we had this on the site a couple of weeks ago, but the 2020 Challenge Cup Final will be played on Saturday 18th of July next year, which um, is well about six weeks earlier than normal. Um, been, a, been a big push for that in recent years with the, the Challenge Cup Final being so close to the Grand Final having an impact on, on numbers. Um, so yeah, so that'll be brought forward to July the 18th. I think they're going to try and bring it, bring it even further forward than that um, moving forward as well. Johnny Whiteley uh, will present the 1895 Cup trophy to whoever wins that on Saturday as well. Um, and the Man of the Match award has been named after Ray French, so the, the Man of the Match in the 1895 Cup game will win the Ray French award. Um, just running through some of the other stories. We have got a ticket competition actually on the website at the moment um, where you can win tickets to Saturday's Challenge Cup final at Wembley. That's in partnership with Ron Seal. Uh, please do get on the site. It's still there on the homepage. If you go on loverbelieve.com, scroll down. It closes at the end of this show, so at one o'clock um, it closes. So make sure you get on there if you've not got tickets for Wembley already. Um, other bits and bobs going on. Obviously a quiet week with a lot of teams off and about. Um, York, who reached the Championship playoffs last weekend, their new stadium is increasing in capacity, which is a boost for them. Hull KR are going to change the name of Craven Park um, in a sponsorship deal with Hull College. Um, Greece are playing Scotland in London. If you've been following that story, the Greek Rugby League are actually banned from playing Rugby League in Greece due to a, a rather confusing situation where modern pentathlon have the uh, the rights for rugby league in Greece. So, um, unfortunately, their 2021 World Cup qualifier against Scotland will have to be played in London. Uh, Sam Burgess has been included in the NRL's team of the decade. Um, Batley, we should mention Batley last week as well. Uh, of course, Archie Bruce tragically passed away on so overnight on Saturday night, having made his debut for Batley in Toulouse on Saturday night. Um, Post mortem's confirmed he died of asphyxiation, so um, still waiting for further details on that. Of course, condolences to to Archie Bruce's family, his friends, and of course his teammates at Batley, and of course Dewsbury Morris Community Club. It was his debut, twenty years old. Um, a really sad story over the weekend. Uh, Robert Hicks has spoken out about online trolls, which is a developing story, which we seem to be getting more and more on over the over the weeks. We had the situation where London players were getting abused on social media as well. Uh, Chris Nenu has signed a new deal with Salford. Um, our French Roundup is going down really well, so I don't know if you've seen this on the site. Uh, we've got French Roundup every week, usually on Monday, sometimes on Tuesday, um, where we round up what's going on in the French domestic comp and largely what's happening with Catalan and Toulouse. Catalan have actually signed 10 young players uh, recently because they've scrapped in their under 19s. Um, and then former Catalan's winger Justin Murphy uh, has gone in to Toulouse. Um, a few more Challenge Cup stories before we get Drew involved. Robert Hicks is the referee for the Challenge Cup final this weekend. Uh, Chris Kendall is the 1895 Cup. We're waiting for the squads. As soon as we drop them, we'll talk about them in this show. Um, Drew, Hello. welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, I was rushing. I, I, I was let, let's start. Let's now. start. We'll start before we get on to this year's final. Let's talk about. Um, let's talk about the moving. The moving it forward yep. to July. The 18th next year. Uh, I, I think it was the, the correct choice. It was the right choice. Obviously, we've been talking about the Challenge Cup being at the wrong date and the wrong time for a couple of years now. Obviously, we, I, I've been to Wembley as, as a fan and as a reporter. Uh, as a fan, when I was going, it was always a nightmare. 
because obviously it's it's a bank holiday weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so a lot of the the train strikes happen on bank holiday weekend, uh, especially we predominantly it, it's it's teams be, being from the north as mm. well. It, it, not Northern Rail no, normally have a, a couple of strikes, or they normally have strikes on a well, or, or station as well. Stuff, yeah, I, I mean, um, I, so I, it, it, it's, it's the right decision. I think it's going to get more people through the gates. Obviously, not as many people will be going away because a lot of people go away on bank holidays. Mm. Um, so that I think it's good. middle of July is a good a, middle of July is a good time, isn't it? Because it's before sort of people go on holidays, before the schools yeah. finish. There's not. I mean, obviously, there is other sport on. Yeah. Um, you know, it'll be the European Championships next year in football. But you know, you do feel like you could you could dominate a weekend in July with with Definitely. rugby league. Definitely. Now, and, 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 and I think it's it's obviously we don't know if the eighty nine five cup final. It, well, it, we don't know if the eighty nine five cup in general is being played next year, do we? Mm. Um, but I think it, that'll be a, a boost to the sport as well. If, if that continues next year, obviously we'll see how many fans turn up on Saturday for winners v Sheffield. Um, but I think that that'll be a shot in the arm for the sport if they can get up that on on July the eighteenth next year. So a few a few things re- regarding that. It'll be the first time since two thousand and four that the final won't be in August. Um, that's one of the the highlight bits of news. It's the first time actually in history that the Challenge Cup final will be played in July. Now I didn't find any reference to this, but. I, I my I thought that are they not trying to bring it even further forward and this is almost like a stop. Hopefully, yeah, stop yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I think they are. Um, it de- it depends. You just got to, it's it's probably trial and error, isn't it? You yeah. just got to see how it goes next year with it being brought forward. Because like I mean, if you think you if you had possibly if, question it, I suppose if you had if. if I mean, Magic Weekend's obviously an issue. Yeah. I mean, if you, I mean, and, and the chances are you can't do this because of the football grounds. I would say, if, what if you move Magic Weekend to like the first May Bank holiday? You know, May Day, and it's usually yeah. like fourth or fifth of May, yeah. or whatever. Move Magic Weekend to there, and then you've got start of May is Magic, middle of July is Challenge Cup final, and then start of October is Grand Final. There's quite a decent mm-hmm. gap there between between the big events. Or, or you could scrap Magic Weekend and just have the Challenge well, Cup final. Well, I'd, on, on I'd, that scrap, weekend. I'd scrap Magic Weekend, but there's people who like it, so. I'm not allowed to suggest it. Well, I don't know, but that, that, that's, that's why the, the, the Challenge Cup final attendances have dropped in so, recent years. So, we'll wait. is there any squad news now? Nothing? No squad news as of yet? I don't think. Um, so, we, I, I think, suppose I the, the main thing... Paying attention to us. I know. The main thing yeah, that... Yeah. The main thing yeah. that... I suppose one of the main things that we're looking at in terms of the squad is, of course, the Warrington situation where um, you've got the likes of Blake Austin... Um, I would imagine that even if he's not fit to play, he'll be named in the squad. Yeah, uh, I, I fully expect him to play, James. I think. You expect, you expect him to play? I, I to fully play? expect him to play. Well, I, even I, if he's only par, I, I, partially fit. I believe his mum and dad are already uh, f- flew, flew over. From, yeah, but they can't Australia. just play him because his mum and dad have flown over. Um, no, but, but it obviously puts a strong indication there that he's going to be playing because yeah. they wouldn't fly over just to. Watch him sit on the bench, will they? Or sit on the sideline? Uh, I, I, f- I fully expect him to play. I know a half at Blake Austin isn't as good as the, f- the normal Blake Austin that we've been used to seeing in Super League this year, but I think if Warrington have any hope of, uh, of coming out on top against St. Helens, they've got to play Austin. I, I know it's a huge risk, and I know Leeds did it with Keith Senior, didn't they, in the Challenge Cup? When he was injured. What what do you do? Do you do you carry do you carry a sub that can I suppose worry and I've got the luxury that Clark can play the full eighty at hooker. Yeah. So if if Austin plays, are they gonna have to name someone on the bench with a view to I mean, have they got anyone? You, you, you probably you well you you start Austin and Smith, wouldn't you, and you play Pat, you put Patton on the bench. No Smith's not playing, is he? Oh of course, of course, of course. Okay. Um, Josh Josh Who Lewis? Witness. Oh, you, you could potentially put Josh Doolis though on the bench. Well, well, yeah, but and then Steph Ratchford in the arms. No. I mean, a lot's going to depend on Charlie as well, isn't it? I mean, yeah. are we expecting Charlie? I, to... I, I, I expect them all to play. You expect them all to. I'll play. be very surprised if Hughes, Charlie, Austin, and Ratchford don't play. Any, any, any of them don't play. I fully expect them to. 
I mean, because I mean, obviously, if, if Charlie plays, that gives you a little bit more flexibility, doesn't it, in terms of who can play, yeah, yeah. who can play there and move Ratchford around. But I suppose the concern is, is if you do play, I mean, it's going to be tough for Warrington, isn't it? I mean, you know, it, 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 Warrington are big underdogs, aren't they, for this game because of what's going on with Saint Helens and and how informed Saint Helens are. But if, if Austin plays and after 10 minutes he breaks down, it's going to have a major impact on, on oh, the game, I know, isn't it? I know that it's, and is that, is that, worth, it could, it could is that well, risk worth taking? Well, what, why not? Because the good. The, the are you, are you thinking they've got anyway? nothing to lose? Is that what yeah, you're yeah. saying? The, the, the massive outside is that like Steve Price said last week after the loss at Wigan that they're the biggest underdogs in Challenge Cup history and Saints oh, are the biggest yeah, favourites. I probably wouldn't quite go that far. I think the mind games had already started at that point. Well, but I mean, you, you, the amount of money that Warrington spend and the, and the run that they're on, I mean, to, they've lost seven out of nine in Super League, which, yeah. to be honest, is diabolical, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and, and all of a sudden, Price is going to find himself under a little bit of pressure. If, if Warrington are embarrassed on Saturday, yeah. you know, I'm sure the money men at Warrington, you know, as much as everyone's been crowing over the social media this year, I'm sure the management at Warrington don't want their expensively assembled squad mm. to be embarrassed on the big stage. I, I, don't, I, I don't think I don't think they'll be embarrassed, but I think Saints will will, will uh, win comfortably. Uh, I can't see it being a huge score to to Saints, um, but again, it just depends. On I mean, I, sp- I suppose it, like it depends on the injured players. If they're only fifty percent, all of them, then. <coughs> yeah. it, then Saints Saints are very very comfortable well, from, from the way go. Oh oh oh! Blake Austin um, isn't in it. Blake oh, Austin well. isn't in the squad. No. Wow. Well, breaking for you there, so no Blake Austin. Wow. In the, but then, but having said that, Price has got form for this, hasn't he? So so who's in the squad? I'll, I'll get it up now. I'll get it. Come on, James. I'm gone flipping heck. Um. So big news and Blake Austin not in the Warrington squad, but. Can we take anything from that? Because Price has got form for this where he names a squad and then... Oh, Jimmy Carter said fashionably late there, Drew. Yeah. Oh, I can't believe you, Jimmy. Right, War- Warrington, right listen, Warrington's squad is Aquala, Charnley, Darrell Clark, Jason Clark, Cooper Curry, Davis Goodwin, Hill Hughes, King Lynham, Levette, Mamo, Murdoch Masilla, Patton, Philbin, Ratchford, Westwood. Now, Westwood's I... Westwood's been the squad, I'm surprised. So, I so there's know. no Austin, but do you think... Do you, I, I won't believe Austin's not playing until I see the 17. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I know what you mean. Because um, this is this is a difficult. I, I still think he'll play. You still think Austin will play? No, he's not in the squad. It's my I mean, game, who, isn't it? Who, it's my who, game. who have they got there? So, I mean, who's going to play? Because, I mean, they've got, they've got Patton. He's, Patton's the only recognised half. So, I mean, is Goodwin going to have to play six? Ratchford? I mean, because they've not named Thewlis isn't in there, so there's not. I mean, I suppose Mamo could play fullback. So you're thinking Mamo would play fullback, Lyon and, and Charlie on the wing, and then Ratchford go in to yeah. stand off. Yeah. Um, you know. That's, that's what I think. Uh, going going off that squad anyway, but I think surely Blake Austin is going to play. You reckon? Surely. Is Jack Hughes in the squad? Did you mention? Jack Hughes yeah. is in the squad. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, so interesting one. It'll be interesting to see. To see to see what happens, um, you know, with that one. Of course, Warrington have lost six finals in a row as well, so it's not just about getting embarrassed. Yeah. You know, yeah. the potential for embarrassment is that they've lost six finals running, um, which is I think is it four Super League Grand Finals and two Challenge Cup finals on that mm-hmm. run. Um, you know, all of a sudden Warrington are almost get to that point now where they need to get this sort of monkey off the back a little bit, especially because they're going to be up against it. They've already, they've made a right mess of getting the playoffs. Sorted out, and yeah. um, you know the grand final. We've, we've got a, we've got a couple of comments on on the Warrington team. Um, Paul Harrison says Hughes, Ratch- Ratchford, and Chiana will hundred percent play. Austin will probably play, but eighty percent fit. Jason Pillmore, you could put Ratchford at six, and then have a backup fullback. Obviously, the, yeah, the team has been more. announced, and there's there's a uh, there's no Thulis, um but Mamo will probably play fullback, wouldn't he? Um, Louis Banks says, Levet, mo- the most likely cover on the bench, he can play if half needed. What do you reckon? Is he yeah, I mean, Levet, I mean, I mean the thing with Levet, a bit like Ratchford, Levet's got a bit of utility value, hasn't he? Um, Paul Harrison says, don't need any backs on the bench, there are enough utilities that can switch around. On paper, it could be the closest final in recent history. Seriously? 
I think it could be one, of the, one get, of the most far out. He needs to get a new paper. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, while we wait for the he also one. said Patton and Curry in the arms. I don't think I've seen Ben Curry ever play play half back for Warrington. I think he played uh he played a bit of half back when he was a lad for Golden Parks, our junior, but uh While we're uh, while we wait we're Warrington. still waiting for St. Helens squad to come through, but the witness squad for the eight ninety five cup final against Sheffield has come in. Witness's first trip to Wembley for twenty six years. Sheffield of course, twenty one years after their famous win over Wigan. Witness I've made eight changes to the team that lost against Lee last week. Patrick Carvan, Danny Craven, Chris Dean, Anthony Gellin, Jordan Johnson, Dan Norman, Jack Owens and Sam Wilde all coming back in. So the witness, 19 man, is Arvan, Ashall, Bot, Brand, Kale, Jay Chappellow, Ted Chappellow, Craven, Dean, Gellin, Gilmore, Hanson, Hatton, Johnston, Lulai, Lyons, Norman, Owens, Walker and Wilde. Um, witness have been pretty poor in the league. Um, I mean, their only result of note in the last two months was the semi-final against Lee, which of course was a terrific match. Mm. Sheffield beat them pretty comfortably a few weeks ago in Sheffield. Well, that, that was um, the right off, wasn't it? That, that was the week after. That was the week they after they played Lee, yeah. Um, but I, I mean, what what do you think of the witness witness Sheffield? I mean, Sheffield are going well. They still got a chance in the playoffs. They've got some really good players, you know. Got some real season players. Yes. They've got Thackeray and Walker in the halves, who are, you know, both real good, experienced championship halfbacks. Yeah. And Sheffield, in many ways, a bit like twenty-one years ago against Wigan. They've got nothing to lose. No, um, they haven't got anything to lose, and I don't. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if either if both teams. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Sheffield won. I wouldn't be surprised if Witness won. I'd probably sway more towards Witness just because of the. I think, um, I think they've got a bit more talent have witness, have witness, than, than what Sheffield have. But Sheffield have got a well experienced side. And to be fair, they've, they've continued to defy the odds this year, haven't they? They're still. Yeah, the two points, they're, they're still two, they're, they're, the two points yeah. behind with two games left. Uh, I don't think they'll make the top five. I think the top five is made up in the Championship. So I think it, it obviously bought, all boils uh, down to this game yeah. for them. I, I, I just, do you think I, I witness have witness put. Will be a bit too strong. Do you think witness have put too much pressure on themselves? Because. Pretty much since maybe well since the eight ninety five cup started in May time, witness have been pretty vocal about wanting to get to Wembley and, and winning the cup because they you know the playoff chances are gone, but their league form has been atrocious. Has been terrible, yeah. yeah. It's been terrible since probably I think the I think the only game they've won in the league since the start of June was against Rochdale. Um, you know, and it, it, you know, you <laughs> have they have they built it up so much that they're actually gonna go on to this occasion and be like Oh, pressure. Oh, but, <laughs> but on the flip side of that, I suppose you could say that they did that against Lee in the semi-final and Witness, yeah. that was probably by far Witness's best performance yeah. since, you know, maybe even all season. And I, and I think obviously a couple of players would have been touted as well just before the transfer deadline uh, by Witness, but they obviously mm. decided to stay at the club just because of the, the, the Wembley yeah. factor. Um, I think... No, I, th- I think Witness, I know they've got a young squad, but they've also got a few experienced players there. A few a few who have played on the big stages before, and I think I think they'll they'll be okay with Yeah, you, I mean, you look at Arvan, you look at Kale, you look at Dean, you look at Gilmore, you look at Hansen, you know, even Jack Owens to an extent. There's a, there is a yeah. bit of experience in there, and I think it's interesting, Arvan, of course, he's not played since the semi-final because he, uh, he had that ankle injury, so, you know, I'd imagine they see value of having his experience um, there. We're still waiting for the St. Helens squad to drop. Um, they're, they're waving off at the moment, it seems, at, at the 12, top. 12.30 they leave. They're leaving at 12.30, so um, <laughs> nothing yet from Sheffield either. Um, so go on then, let's talk about the final. And is there any outcome other than a St. Helens win? I can't, I can't, I just are, are, can't. Are, are you thinking it'll be a bit like that grand final the other year between Wigan and Saints, the Ben Flower one, where it was odds on, it was odds on <laughs> Wigan, but obviously someone, um, you know, Flower did something stupid early on. Honestly, I, I I just can't see Warrington win. I think even if Saints went to man down early doors, I think it'd still be an uphill task for for Warrington. Saints are flying, aren't they? Mm. Uh, a couple of players have obviously been injured, but in that injury time, they would have rested up as well. So they like yeah, Lachlan yeah. Coots, a fresh we body. Think Coots Alex, play? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Alex Walmsley's a fresh body. 
So you've got two of your key players, James Roby, of course, the captain. <laughs> he's coming back, he's fresh. So you've got three key players who will be fit as a fiddle. I mean, I suppose every, everything points towards Saints, doesn't it? They're so far ahead in the league. They're fresh. They've beaten Warrington a few times already this season. Warrington are in, in really bad form. Yeah. Warrington missing the main man. Um, a few other things as well. It's Saints' first Challenge Cup final for 11 years. So you'd expect them to take a lot of fans. I understand Warrington have hardly shifted any tickets. Really? Um, well, not hardly any, but someone, someone close to the club told me they reckon witness have sold more than Warrington. No way. That that well, no how word. true that is, but that's something they only go. Because the thing is, is Warrington are in. They're at Wembley. Surely not. They're at Wembley for the sixth time in eleven years. Um, is like the novelty wearing off a little true. bit. Yeah, um, possibly. Certainly possibly. around the town. Obviously, we're based in Warrington. There's not as much of a buzz about it as you would normally think. I've seen loads of adverts. It has to be said. There's a, you know, the the RFL cop for criticism for marketing. But I've seen billboards. I've seen bus shelter signs. I've seen signs in the town centre all pushing ticket sales which in some ways isn't a good sign really because mm. if you've got to push ticket sales for Wembley and Warrington you know you probably you know you've got to maybe ask yourself well hang on yeah. Warrington get 10,000 people in every week yeah. you'd like to think people know when the Challenge Cup final is and they're gonna go um, um, and it's actually interesting because uh, Warrington are closer to uh, London Broncos who are bottom of the table yeah. than they are St. Helens, who are just one place above them in first in the Super League table. That's not a dig at Warrington by any means. That's just highlighting how good St. Helens are. Because it's not, it, it, it's first v second in the Challenge Cup final, but it's in a way it's not because there's 60 yeah, points yeah, difference yeah. there between them. I mean, there's, I mean, there's, there's, eight win, there's eight wins. I mean, realistically, if St. Helens don't win the treble, it'll, it's almost, it'll almost be a tragedy now. That's how big of the gap is between Saints and the yeah. rest. If Saint Helens don't win the treble yeah. this season, it's almost a tra- it's almost a travesty for rugby league. Well, you know what I think about the grand final. Oh no, no, let's not go uh, into that. Um, and I think I'm I think I'm kind of proving that everyone wrong in these last couple of weeks. Okay, I've, I've said for months now that we're gonna go to get get to the grand final, James. Even what I think it was when they were seven, seventh, maybe eighth. I said to Steve in the office next door, I said. Watch out because we're gonna go in for that top five, and they have done, James. Then to be fair, if if we can do get to the grand final, they, they should be applauded uh, because the adversity that they've shown this year, Adrian Lamb in particular, having to go through all that farcical situation with um, Sean Edwards at the start of the year, which seems so long ago now, uh, but he had to go through all that. He dealt with it. He's brought in his own signings for next year. It right. Well, Wigan, Wigan hours finished now. Uh, Lance Todd right. Trophy then. Lance Todd Trophy. I mean, obviously it's pretty impossible. Yeah. To, I, you know, I never quite understand why people ask this question: who's going to win the Lance Todd? Because I mean, anything could happen. Um, you would imagine a St. Helens player is going to win it. Is, <laughs> yeah. is it? Is it going to be Roby's? Is it going to be Roby's? What's going on? I think Lucy's going to self-worth. No. Um, read, the, read the latest comment for James. Read the latest comment for James. We're gonna. Are we going? Are we going? Um, are we going? Saint Helens player to win the Lance Todd Trophy. Yeah, um, I think it is. It's a, it's a difficult one because obviously anyone can win it, but the two that, that instantly stand out are James Roby and Johnny Lomax, aren't they? Possibly Lachlan Coote. Um, James, James Robin, he's, he's got his name written all over it. Scripts are sometimes meant, are written. Um, he's the only remaining player from since his last Challenge Cup win. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, when you're looking at stories, as well as that. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit like the Sheffield Skipper. thing. It's a bit like the Sheffield thing as well. That's that's almost a, a story in itself. You know, if, if Sheffield were to do it and Mark Aston uh, 21 years later. Um, Let's move on a little bit from the Challenge Cup final. We, we, we talked about this in the office before. Justin Holbrook is, of course, going to Gold Coast next yeah. season, but um, former St. Helens coach Nathan Brown is going to be leaving Newcastle Knights. Um, do you think Holbrook's maybe regretting jumping a bit early? Well, I mean, I suppose he had to, do, he had to decide one Probably way Probably not, it. to be fair. He, he, he couldn't really... Because he, Nathan Brown's parted ways with the club. He's not, he's not been sacked instantly. Um, he's leaving on good terms at the end of the season. 
it was impossible for just Justin Albrook to know at the time. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, I mean, the, I mean, the, the Newcastle job were coming up. And to be fair, even with the Newcastle job coming up, the Gold Coast Titans job, you, it, it's less. I suppose it's more risk free because they're so bad that you'd like to think that you can't get much worse. <laughs> he can almost start from the bottom and and put his own staff on yeah, it. Whereas yeah. you'd imagine he'd go to Newcastle and they'd probably expect something to happen straight away. Whereas Gold Coast maybe might True. give him some time to build. Because it, because if you look at Newcastle's squad, they started the season so well as well. They, they were in the top four uh, for large parts of that first half of the season, and, that, and the second half they've just slipped away. Yeah, they've got some f- fantastic players: David Clemmer, Kaelin Ponga. Uh, they they have got a very strong team on paper. Uh, Mitch Pearce, uh, former Origin halfback, so they have got a, a very impressive squad. Who will go into that? Well, obviously. so Sean Wayne is one that popped up this morning. I mean, I, 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 mean I, 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 I mean, Wigan will be worried if Sean Wayne goes there. I mean, they've already lost half the team to Canberra. Imagine if Wayne goes to Newcastle. Well, I think I'd like to see, I'd like to see Wayne get the job just because I'd like to see an English coach in the NRL. Mm. Uh, I'd like to see an English coach have a crack at it, see what, what he can do in the NRL. Because obviously, in the NRL, there's a lot of journeymen in the NRL. Uh, what, coaches, you mean? No, 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 players. And you don't tend to see half as many academy players giving a go is what you see over here mm. uh, so it'd be interesting yeah, to see but, what Sean Wayne does but, with but, the academy but do you think Wayne would be able to do that in the same way that he did it at Wigan no he, he, would, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't bring through the. I think he brought through 41 players in his 7 seasons at Wigan you, can, you can't do that because the intensity is there in the NRL every mm. single week uh, whereas no disrespect to, to the teams at the bottom of the table but you could hand out one or two debuts against a whole Kiara or witness. Do you well yeah. I mean like, do you like do you think do you think Canberra should have a cherry and white away kit? Possibly. A bit like Witness have had the Canberra away kit. <laughs> Possibly. I mean Witness could probably have Possibly. Done, Witness probably could have done with a few Canberra players this season, it has to be said. Um uh, another bit of um news that's gone on this morning, um the RFL have launched a new report that that basically highlights the impact rugby league has on the towns and cities that it's played in. Now, this is a big thing for me because I get a ton of abuse on Twitter because I have the opinion or the reasonable opinion that I think that there needs, you know, I'm not against expansion or overseas teams, but there needs to be a bit more thought in the in the process of how the leagues are made up and the strategy. And part of the reason or part of one of my reasons for that is because a lot of these rugby league towns or you know places like Dewsbury and Batley and, and you know obviously Witness and St Helens, rugby league is such a key part of them towns that without rugby I mean if without rugby league in Witness say there's not yeah. really much else there. And I think the problem and I think what people have got to understand is that yeah we want to expand rugby league etc but we've just got to make sure that it's not to the detriment of these communities that are relying on this, I mean, some of the figures here, the social impact of rugby league um, is valued at over £185 million pounds a year, um, which is stuff like social well-being, health outcomes, crime reduction, improved education, employment outcomes, volunteer opportunities, improved life satisfaction, you know, the offload programme, which, which we're aware of and where we do a bit of work with State of Mind, that's been delivered in, in Warrington, Witness and Salford over the recent years, and that's you know that's helping yeah. men in witness access or warranting access yeah. support that they wouldn't be able to get without rugby mm. um, and I think that's quite important there's a quote from, from Jamie Jones we can there but uh, an interesting an interesting thing to have a look at as much as yeah it's about the broadcast deals and it's about the commercial let's not forget that the grassroots and the community element of rugby is so important yeah. to you know the sport exists for a reason the sport the whole sport rugby league only exists because the makeup of the north of England was different to the rest of England at the time. Um, that hasn't, you know, and as much as time has changed over the time, you can't move away from the fact that that's what caused the separation. Um, so I just, I just like to have a bit more empathy from people when they're criticising people like me that are a bit more defensive over, you know, the existing clubs. There's no reason why we can't have expansion clubs and existing clubs in the same, you know they both can't coexist, but let's not try and force something to the detriment. I mean, we, we, we talked about this week about Oldham as an example, mm. um, you know, of, as a club of, of a club who have thousands and thousands of fans that has 
you know, slowly being marginalised over the years and, um, you know, you're not really expanding, the, you know, there's a worrying situation at Bradford, which we'll talk about in a second. You're not really expanding the game if, for every new club you bring in, one's yeah. dying out. Um, that's my opinion anyway. Yeah, I, I do agree with you to a certain extent. So, we'll talk um, about Bradford, oh, go on. Neil Barraclough says, question know, for I've James, seen. when are you getting that <laughs> cup finished? There's your answer, Neil. He's not. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about Bradford. I, I, to be fair, I can't afford a full airport because I paid full price to get in at Bradford this year. Oh, 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 oh. Um, oh, oh, so anyway, so, like, it, so it, was 20, it, was, it was 25 quid to pay on the day when I went to Odsall early in the season. Um, the championship so, rugby so, league. So, I mean, let's, 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 let's try and work out what's happening so Chalmers in my opinion Chalmers is just basically trying to play a game to make the RFL or the council or whoever he wants to to give them a better deal the ground's falling apart it's been falling apart for years it's my favorite ground away ground to go to so I'm not I'm not an anti odsel at all um, Bradford are still struggling with the hangover of the problems that they've been in administration three times they were liquidated but they're still struggling now my opinion is that they should have restarted. They shouldn't have. They should have dropped balls and started as something new when they liquidated. Um, but even if they had done that, they'd have still been hamstrung by Odsall, which mm. you know is clearly an issue. Um, what I mean, I suppose, what do you do in the situation? Because I suppose two things. Chalmers knew the situation when he took over. You know, it's not changed. They're still at Odsall. And two, what's the alternative? Because you know, Bradford Park Avenue is too small, Valley Parade is too big slash expensive. I, I have no idea. Uh, they, they need a new stadium, don't they? Mm. they, they, they but I, if you I, can't, but if you can't I'm afford try, to I, pay rent in an existing stadium, how on earth are you going to afford to back to you know pay for a new stadium? Initially, because I'm obviously we're on this side of the Pennines, we don't obviously we're not massively in touch with with the goings on at Bradford, so. Um, Initially, my thoughts are Grand Show uh, with Bradford City Football Club, Valley Parade. But that obviously. Yeah, when, when to do with the pitch, I think they needed too much work. Yeah, on when, the pitch. when we've looked at that, the maintenance costs mm. and the rent uh, to have two teams at the stadium was just uh, not suitable whatsoever. So then you rule out Bradford City's Valley Parade, you go on to the next one, Bradford Park Avenue's Horsewall Stadium. I think that will be small, just yeah. over 2,000 fans. But, Bradford are getting over 3,000 fans, but, 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 maybe 5,000. They had 10,000 for the Leeds game and the Challenge Cup. But uh, would, so would you make the argument that... they'd have to go into a ballot then, would, wouldn't you? Yeah, but would you make the argument that they'd be better off doing that than going to Dewsbury? Yeah. I, 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 it's pointless taking Bradford out of the city of Bradford. Well, I, seen it, I, can't remember it, I can't remember who it was, but I've seen... If the you're news. doing that, you may as well just merge, merge clubs. Yeah, I can't... I can't remember I it. Can't I, can't, see the sense. I can't remember who it was, but they basically said that you know, obviously Dewsbury's a lot cheaper. But if you lose fifteen hundred yeah. fans paying twenty quid a goal, then you're losing the savings that you're making. Mm. Um, and I don't think if they move to Dewsbury, I think they probably get less fans than what they would at Bradford Park. Yeah, yeah, possibly. Um, I th and I and I you can't tell me. One and a half thousand I mean, next year. I don't. I, I I haven't been to Bradford Park Avenue, so I'm not sure it's like. But you can't tell me that there's no way that they could. Potentially bring in some temporary seating to make well, it a little bit well, bigger. London have done that, haven't they? Yeah. London, London well, I mean, Broncos have brought in a temporary she, stand. I mean, look at Sheffield. So Sheffield's good. ground is a joke. Sheffield's ground shouldn't be a championship ground. It's a joke. But they've got a temporary stand up there. You know, the more I, I just think it's Charles is posturing, 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 and I don't think. You know, I've seen tweets today saying, "Oh, come and celebrate the last ever game at Odsall." That is a joke. I cannot believe, you know, they're inviting ex-Bradford Bulls players and Bradford Northern players. It's like, what are you even doing here? That is actually an insult to all the Bradford fans doing that. And I just think he's pushing it that much. He, I, I firmly believe he's just waiting for someone to turn around and say, oh, actually, no, don't go, we'll yeah. subsidise it. But, yeah, but and to I be honest, think, I, 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 I hope that the RFL and whoever else continue to call it his bluff. I, I'm, I'm like you a bit though, James. I think... I love going to Odsall as mm -hmm. a fan or as a reporter. I, lo I love going to Odsall. It's a great ground. Um, it's a historic ground in rugby league. I love how it's it, it's just a ball, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just one. It's like ball. there's nothing else exists in the world yeah. because you're like in the. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, it, I, I, 
I love it. It's, it's, it's so iconic, but at the same time, it's got to go. It's, yeah, it's yeah. just it's too old. And uh, as much as I, I don't like to say that, it's it's just got to go. Uh, and it apparently costs thirty thousand pound a game to to operate well, I mean, the facility. I, I, I mean, but, but then again. Could you not just open the main stand? Well, it's difficult, though, isn't it? Because of the nature of the ground, because of the nature of the ground and the big bowl, it's very hard to, like, coordinate off, you yeah. know, because you've got, you've obviously got the ground level, then you've got almost, like, the terrace, yeah. then you've got, you know, a footway and a road all the way around, and then you've got the turnstiles. It's like, I think it'd be very difficult. But having said that... That burger van at Odds, is very special. You like the burger van Oh, it's, <laughs> it's greasy. Is that a cheat day? Yeah, it? yeah, very cheat. Yeah, very cheat day. And the sweet stall as well, that's, that's quite a lot. Yeah, so... But I, I think I think going to Hawthorne, because I think the Bulls and Bradford Park Avenue were on good terms, weren't they, at the start of the season? And things seemed to be going well, and I, I noticed that Bradford Park Avenue released a Bradford Bulls-inspired kit, didn't they? Yeah, well, I, I think... The, I think, um, I think Bradford Park Avenue even came out with a statement and said that they might even look at putting a team I in. Know, but but then if you look at it, that's kind of like a, a dig at Bradford Bulls in effect. Well, I, I, but I think decided, I, since Bulls decided, yeah, decided and I, to be Yeah, and I I think it. Bradford Park I mean, I think the guy behind Bradford Park, Park, Park Avenue probably shares a similar opinion to me where he thinks Chalmers isn't bending over backwards to keep the club in Bradford. He's doing whatever he wants to do to try and yeah, convince yeah. them to, I, I, to stay. I, I, I agree. Um, I think it's. It's kind of sad though again because we're, we're talking about Bradford's future again in a not so positive light, are we? And it, but it just can't be ignored. It it can't be ignored. It's got to be talked about. Yeah, questions I mean, have got to be answered. It, they? it must be frustrating. Um, it must be frustrating for fans that you know they've been in administration three times. They liquidated. You know they, they were relegated. Don't forget. And they've been promoted back. They've been disappointed on the pitch. It has to be said. That Bradford team, the amount of money they've spent, they should have been finishing in the top five and they haven't. Um, you know, so another season in the Championship next season. Um, you know, even, even the defeat to Halifax in the Challenge Cup quarterfinals. You know, imagine yeah. if, if, if Bradford could have got to the semi final, that would have been a real boost for the club and a boost for the fans. Um, in some ways, we still not had a St. Helens squad. Sheffield have announced their squad. Sheffield, 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 let's have a look then, one gone. Burnley. Saints are going all the time as well, announcing the. Yeah, uh, yeah. Too busy waving them off, aren't they? Yeah. Good turnout at Saints as well. Let's have a look at the Sheffield squad then, hang on, it's coming. I think. Uh, so Sheffield. There's a lot of people wearing Saints off, to be fair. Sheffield squad, their 19 man squad is Josh Guzdek, Ryan Miller, Ben Blackmore, Pat Walker, Anthony Thackeray, James Davy, Brad Knowles, Joel Farrell. Aaron Brown, Greg Burns, Oliver Davis, Corey McLim, Sean Pitt, Blake Broadbent, Paddy Burns, Jacob Ogden, Ben Helliwell, Nathan Mason and James Meadows. Half past five, Saturday, Sheffield Witness, 89.5 Cup final. Ah, a couple of it's on the hour, there. Yeah, it's on the Hour League app. It's also on BBC Red Button. Alright. 981. Channel 981 on freeview, is it? Sky. Sky. Channel 981 on Sky if you want to set it to record. Get it on the Hour League app. Um, get it on the Hour League app, yeah. Um, or of course, if you, or go. go. I'm not used to going on them, them late channels you know, on Sky. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know, I know you're well, from the uh, league. Uh, league. Uh, uh, friend of Love Rugby League or, or close friend of Love Rugby League, Matt Turner, the Warrington Guardian, has tweeted, not surprised by the Warrington squad, but he agrees with me. I will not believe Blake Austin is not playing until I see the team sheet on Saturday. But that's just me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I and agree then, with then, that though. To and then, fun. and then Rod Stordy, of course, is a. Uh, me and Rod share opinions on a few things, including the 19 man squad thing. Rod says the replies to Warrington's tweet about um, Austin not being in the squad. Rod says the replies to this indicate the current level of public confidence in the RFL's 19 man squad rule. Yeah, it needs to go, doesn't it? Sit, it did does. we do that? Did, think... we, did we do that on this show? Yeah, the yeah. six things to scrap. Uh, did, did, did we, we do talk it on this through show? it? No, no but when I did the article, should we get it up now? Well, we'll get it up then. Because we've got 15 minutes. Uh, we've got 15 minutes. I think I think 19 man squads or. If, there should either be a ruling where you've got to stick with the 19 man squad that you announced two days before the game. Well, just don't have or them. you just don't have them at all. You, you either do one or the other. You can't say to teams, oh, there you go, you can announce the 19 man squad two days before and then put a player or two players that weren't even named in the, the 19 man squad in the match day squad because it's just pointless, isn't it? Yeah. What, what's what's the point in doing match previews? What's the point in people looking at the squads? What's the point in. In the clubs announcing the squads, if 
Yeah, it's just a waste of time. If players are going to be Plus, it stops the most annoying thing from happening, and what's that? Clubs announcing it in alphabetical order instead of squad oh, number. Oh, yeah. Right, why wouldn't they just have, you know, what's the point yeah. having squad numbers if you're going to do that? Just Idiots. Right, just um, put it in new, right, numerical si- rather than We must have talked about this on a show, but we'll go for I, it I anyway. Six things to scrap in rugby league. Six things to scrap in rugby league. We're on till one o'clock, there's a fire alarm though, oh, so there might not be. Fire we're, alarm. One, one, we're on till one o'clock, 12 to one every Thursday. Last 15 minutes, things that you want to change or get rid of in rugby league. I did a piece on this a few weeks ago, six things to scrap in rugby league. Here's me six. Dual registration. I own your list, don't I? Well, yeah, mate, wait, well, well, every article's a team, I think. <laughs> Dual registration, which of course could go because yeah. the reserve system's come back. The fire alarm's still going off, but we can't, can't smell smoke. We can't smell any smoke. Um, announcing 90 man squads is one of them. Now, another one, I seen a tweet from you on this yesterday. Um, ticket price hikes oh. on a match day. Um, Thanks, Lucy, for opening the door. We need to go. Oh, <laughs> there's no, I can't, I'm sorry. What do you mean we need to go? Is there a fire? Well. Whoa, what's crack? I'm gone a minute. I'm right, we'll, we'll get through get these, these things. things. Get these get these uh, um, ticket price hike. So that is clubs, you know, 20 quid, whatever. But then if you, it's 20 quid in advance. Oh, I can smell something. Oh, Someone's right. burning toast here. Right. It'll, be be available, it'll be available on Facebook to download on demand. David says, so. sorry I'm late, sorry. We'll be back, we'll be back. Catch us on YouTube and we'll see you next week.